Hello everybody. Let's zoom in into shot once more. Uh, I'd like to have a quick look at the Commodore PET. This is a 4032 model from, oof, I don't know when, 1982 I think, something like that. It was first introduced in 1977 uh, as the um, Commodore 2001, which had a cassette deck and a much smaller chiclet keyboard. So you can uh, you know the difference straight away. This is a UK model, a 4032, 40 column, 32K. Um, the green screen, all built in, ready to go. Put the power on and it's on. Um, there were many uh, accessories made for it over the years from um, EEPROM programmers to disk drives to the, uh, the cassette decks, which were the forerunner of the 64 Vic 20 cassette decks virtually identical, printers and so on and so forth, even a modem at some point. But the um, the strength of the Commodore PET was the fact that it was a business machine. It was a very popular business machine and it was unveiled in 1977 just before the Apple II, although I think the Apple II beat it to market slightly. It was incredibly popular in business in the States mainly and in schools. Schools love them because it's a tin shell. Once it's screwed down, you kids can't get into it. You can't pick it off and walk off with it very easily, so they weren't stolen. So schools like them. The um, Commodore did run an incentive at one point. I think you effectively buy two. You get one free as a tax write-off, which they did for schools. Uh, now, the reason that Commodore got into computers in the first place is... One of the reasons this thing appeared is that in the 70s they were selling calculators and watches. That's what Commodore did. Um, but um, they bought their chips from Texas Instruments. Now Texas Instruments in 1975 increased the prices of their components in an effort to put um, all these companies out of business that were selling calculators in direct competition to Texas Instruments. So Jack Trammell obviously wasn't too keen on that, it almost put Commodore out of business. So his response was to buy Moss Technology, which was a fabrication plant that built their own, manufactured their own microchips. So Commodore bought this. And one of the things that came along with it was Chip Pedal and his uh, Moss 6502 microchip, which Commodore then tried to sell onto third parties. but. Um, no one seemed particularly interested. I think Chuck designed it as a fairly low powered microchip that could do various tasks, but no one wanted it. So he designed the Kim 1, which was a basically a PCB with a keypad on it and some LEDs. Um, effectively, that was it, to learn how to program the 6502. A year later, they designed the Commodore PET, which was this. Jack Tramell told them to build a computer around the 6502, and Chip Pedal did. Now this, the uh, the Commodore PET was shown, I think, in the 1977 CES. It might have been the winter CES, I don't know. But um, around this time, Apple, Steve Jobs and uh, Wozniak, went to Commodore to ask them if they wanted to buy the Apple, Apple One computer. They both wanted jobs at Commodore, as Commodore was a huge computer company in those days. It was, if not the biggest, one of the biggest computer companies around in the late 70s. Or well, one of the biggest companies, not necessarily computer companies at that time. But anyway, they went to Commodore to try and get uh, Commodore to buy the Apple. And they were basically laughed out of the building by Jack Tramiel. And that was the end of that. So in response they released the PET and here it is. Now Apple went along and they redesigned their Apple I and made an Apple II. Which they called the first all-in-one computer. It wasn't the first all-in-one computer. This was the first all-in-one computer. That's just Apple's typical nonsense. Uh, now the Apple II, uh, the uh, Commodore PET sold in huge numbers in uh, business and as I said in education it was a massive seller and they had a big presence in America 
which unfortunately as the years went by they would lose. But what they lost in America they gained for they gained in Europe, but that is another story. But the Commodore PET started off with very limited memory. I think they had 4K, 8K, 16K, then 32, and eventually 96. The last models had 96K, that was a Super PET. And that was basically a pretty high-tech computer for the time. It had very limited graphics, it wasn't for graphics, but what it was for business and programming. The PETs were always seen as a serious machine. The Super Pets, which were the last models, had 96K and they also had language cards in there. They could do Fortran and uh, whatever, Pascal, loads of stuff. Um, Z8, uh, uh, Xilog 80, I think they had in them at one point. Anyway, they could run different languages uh, and different things were made for them. You could even get an 80 column card, some mod or a hack for an 80 column card. But anyway. Whatever you wanted for a computer, the PET had for a very short window of time. It was a very popular machine in business. Um, this is a, a, a game made by Jason Gro at greatnorthweb.com. And this is uh, Bioterror. It's quite good. I saw this and it inspired me to get the PET working. This PET didn't work when I bought it, it was faulty. Still faulty. But I've bypassed it with the help of a very clever chap. If you can see, this is the motherboard which has been cleaned and extensively reworked by myself. The RAM's been changed, the ROMs have been changed, lots of the logic ICs have been changed, the cap's been changed, the power pack's been changed. Anyway, what the fault was, and still is, is that one of the ROMs is have got a broken track somewhere on the board. I've stopped looking now and I probably will never do it. But I've bought a ROM um, ROM card, I suppose, a ROM board uh, off, e off the internet and I'll provide a link for it. And what it does is you plug it into the CPU socket, it's got CPU on it and it's got ROM on it and it's got RAM on it. So basically it takes away probably two thirds of what the motherboard does, puts it on that card and more. If you've got a faulty pet, you put that in there, chances are you'll get it working. Very, very clever. Very good. So that is the Commodore pet. I have had one before. I had the 8032, I think it was. And I had VisiCalc. I also had the twin disk drives and a great load of software for it, which I never used, so I sold that. I've had this one now probably four years, and it's taken me those four years to get it working. Uh, in the end, about a month ago, I decided I'm going to spend all my time and get this going. And eventually I did, but I needed a lot of help and assistance. The v Vintage Computer Forum, I'll provide a link for that as well. They helped me. Dave on there was fantastic at guiding me. But uh, here she is, and she runs perfectly well. It's very good. Very interesting from a historic point of view, practically. Yeah, I'm better off with a 64 or a VIC-20 if you want to play games. I will try and get um, a BBS loaded onto it somehow. Not sure how, but I'll try. But that could be uh, that'll be another video. So here we are, the Commodore Pet. never believe how long I wanted to hear that sound. <laughs> 